You may have heard about it and its famous Knights Order of St. John. If you're into music, you may have heard about it during the Eurosong contest, watched an MTV concert from one of its largest open spaces, or heard about its famous opera tenor Joseph Kaleya. You may have come across it in one of your World War II history lessons. Or you may have not heard anything about it at all. But the fact that Malta stands at the heart of the Mediterranean, the sea that saw great civilizations being born and flourishing, should draw anyone's attention. And once that is drawn, it's there to stay. Malta and its sister island Gozo, an independent nation since 1964, and the European Union member state since 2004, stand at the crossroads of the Mediterranean thoroughfares and have long been a dynamic open market for social, business and multicultural exchanges. For more than 7,000 years, Malta has been a safe and trustworthy broker among international players. Over the years, Malta has been under the rule of the Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Romans, Arabs, Aragonese, Castilian, Knights of St. John, French and the British. Like a marvelous painting bearing the stroke of every brush, Malta carries the imprint of every visiting power, from its flag, language, architecture, to hospitality and character. The Maltese manage to interact with these diverse civilizations, building a harmonious style of life, integrating the similar, at times opposing cultures. Business corporations from diverse economies such as the USA, Germany and Dubai find in Malta a comfortable English-speaking, safe and modern operations center that caters for their needs. World-class medical services, building on a strong tradition established by the Order of St. John, contribute to one of the highest standards of living in the Mediterranean. Malta is fast developing into an inter-regional and intra-regional educational, business, financial and trade center attracting major foreign investment in information and communication technology. The Maltese brokering character and the island's geography have often led Malta to promote regional dialogue and stability in the Mediterranean. On several occasions, Malta has provided the ideal location to host international summits, conferences and other related activities, including the historical Burj Gorbachev summit in the late 1980s that sealed the end of the Cold War. The purely Mediterranean character, sun-loving and friendly Maltese, ensure a vivacious atmosphere of colors and hospitality, renowned the world over. Any event is a special occasion to celebrate in Malta, especially with locally made fireworks, which are the mark of Maltese festivities and are world-renowned. The local cuisine entices the appetite of any discerning individual. The climate is temperate throughout the year, allowing for country walks and outdoor leisure activities during the winter, surrounded as it is by the warm blue Mediterranean waters. Departing from Lua International Airport, we are now heading towards Valletta, the capital city of Malta. Valletta bears the name of the great grandmaster Jean Parizot de la Vallette. He led the defense against the Ottoman Empire in the Great Siege of 1565. After this great siege, Grandmaster La Vallette, together with the Knights of St. John, devoted all their attention and energy towards building a defensive stronghold, which today is presented as Valletta. The main architect was Francesco Laparelli da Cortona, Pope St. Pius V's personal architect and Michelangelo Buonarroti's assistant. Arriving in Malta on 28 December 1565, Laparelli had the plans for the city drawn within three days. On March 28, 1566, the new city was officially born.
The inauguration ceremony was held here on the site of the Chapel of Our Lady of Victories and the city was Christian Valletta after the Great Grandmaster. Today, Valletta manifests itself as an urban area, adorned with magnificent 16th century Baroque buildings that have seamlessly included themselves in the daily lives of both locals and visitors. The grid structure of the city streets, with their horizontal and vertical straight line designs and well planned fortifications, mesmerizes architects to this day. Valletta is the seat of the island's administration, business, services, and especially cultural activity. The developments are still undergoing to this very day, with the building of a new parliament and a new entrance for the capital, under the direction of the world-renowned Renzo Piano, who is an Italian Pritzker Prize-winning architect. Along the ages, the city's motto was developed, a city built by gentlemen for gentlemen, which speaks of the soul and the identity of this city. To honor this architectural gem, in 1980, UNESCO declared Valletta a World Heritage Site. Our destination point is the Valletta campus of the University of Malta. This building was part of the new city of Valletta. The university came here as part of the Jesuit presence in Malta through direct papal intervention. The Jesuit College Rector, Father Martino Andrea, was able to obtain from the Order the right to confer degrees on candidates who had pursued their courses at the Order Stadium, a power which Pope Pius VI and Gregory XIII had granted to the Jesuit Order. The statues of the stadium were similar to those granted to the Order's Rachel Studiolo. In 1768, Grandmaster Emmanuel Pinto de Fonseca expelled the Jesuits from Malta and changed the Collegium from a Catholic university to a state university and named it Publica Università di Studi Generali. Having received approval from Rome in October 1769, Grandmaster Pinto constituted the Università by a decree on the 22nd November of the same year. Two years later, the Collegio Medici was set up as one of the faculties making up the University. During the British period, that is from 1800 to 1964, the university statutes and regulations were brought in line with the universities in the United Kingdom. The University of Malta is the oldest British Commonwealth University outside the UK. The, the University of Malta started out in, in, in that building. It, it started off as a Jesuit college in the uh, 60s. Uh, most of the faculties, all of the faculties, were moved to the campus at Imsida. However, uh, part of the building was retained. In recent years we took over uh, the whole building and are um, refurbishing it in a phased uh, manner. At the core of these international collaborative programs is a belief in the need to interrelate diverse areas of knowledge and of creating a community of learning that is multidisciplinary, multicultural and multi-skilled. The international master's programs consist of a number of degree courses uh, jointly with uh, uh, mostly U.S. universities where uh, the students receive uh, a dual degree. They receive a degree from the University of Malta and another degree uh, from the collaborating U.S. university. Apart from the facilities of the Valletta campus, students can also benefit from the services offered at the new campus of MSIDA. The original building in Valletta could not accommodate the many developments that took place over the years. In 1968, the university invested in a modern and larger campus in Msida. This campus houses a large library. The collections are built up in close consultation with faculty, researchers and scholars to support the teaching and research programs of the University of Malta. Academic staff and students enjoy the convenience of remote access to licensed electronic journals and databases. The library also offers orientation tours to incoming students 
and regular instruction sessions in the use of electronic resources and managing bibliographies to students and faculty in both group and individualized settings. Other facilities include silent and group study spaces with both wired and wireless network connectivity. Furthermore, students can benefit from the sports facilities and other services such as the counseling services, IT services, students' advisory services, SIMS support, chaplaincy, and green environment and space, which is very suitable for study and group work. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, says the old proverb. Students' experiences and testimonies confirm that the university's motto of outstanding past, bright future, are really at the heart of the University of Mortal's mission and modus operandi. Uh, it's been a blast, really. Um, the professors have all been really, really interesting. Uh, the course has been great. It's been a good combination of uh, Maltese and American professors. Uh, facilities have been amazing. It's been really neat being in such a historical city as Valletta. This building is in the middle of Valletta, so it's in the heart of the city. And the journey here every day is an experience because we get to walk through the market. There's people selling things left, right and centre. You come across a lot of different kinds of people. I've been in Malta for about nine months now, coming up on nine months. And that's hard to believe. Time has flown. It's been a blast. Courses that I've done in the past have been quite big. They haven't been very intimate. But in my course there's only ten students. And um, with our lectures we have a very good rapport. And the, we feel that we can go to them and find problems or anything like that. So it's been a, a very good learning experience so far. The facilities as well as the lectures, it's, just, it's, it's been top notch. Um, the practical experience as well as the academic experience of the lecturers is very diverse and it brings great perspectives to the course um, as well as the group of students that we uh, study with very diverse from all over the world bringing different perspectives uh, really the history has been amazing for us to experience uh, did some dot or like got scuba certified while i was here so pretty unique and scuba certified and i think it's the third best dive site in the world. I think that Malta is so rich in culture, there's always something to do, there's always something to go and see. Um, very similar to the Irish culture, there's a lot of partying, there's always an excuse to celebrate some things. So. Um, I mean, there's plenty of activities to keep us, yourself involved in here in Malta. Just this weekend I went paintballing. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty to do. Uh, just being next to, one of, the, one of the things I enjoy about Malta is being so close to the, the sea. I grab my book, grab my a paper, grab my computer, I should say, go sit down by the sea, type it up. Um, walking along the promenade, I'm over there in the Salima, St. Julian's area, which is, is beautiful. As well as I'm a history major. Um, the reason I came to Malta is actually I followed the Phoenicians and uh, saw that they came here, big fan, decided I had to come myself. And the, the history all over the place is great. The hypogeum, uh, a structure that goes back 6000 BC, I believe. Having the opportunity to come to another country that isn't my own, it means that I'm immersed in another culture, so I get in touch with a lot more. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome. Advancing your academic profile here in Malta is much more than studying or reading for a degree. It is an enriching experience which makes and moulds the person. It is a stage in life that injects the Mediterranean joy de vivre and typically vibrant Maltese way of being into one's fabric, with a probably the best set of bells in the world, in the most likely nicest church in the country a stone throw away, and a rowdy fish hawker with his surely best catch on the market just a corner away. The concept of loneliness and Malta are somewhat incompatible. Whether it's a band or football clubhouse, a cafe or snack bar, one is never too far from the smell of instant coffee and mouth-watering pastizzi. And wherever you may buy the world-famous pastry delicacies at a few cents, rest assured you are most pleasantly welcome. Most certainly, in a place where living is so easy, studying cannot be much less. <laughs>